What's up, everybody? We're here at the Las Vegas Speedway for the Indy Autonomous Challenge. Now, it's exactly what it sounds. It sounds like the Indy 500, but it's not quite because this is more technology based and it's autonomous. So we have a bunch of autonomous, super fast race cars speeding around the track autonomously, apparently in the dark with lights on. It's going to be crazy. So we're going to see self-driving cars 180 miles per hour. I'm excited to go in there and see what we got. I mean, I want to see some racing. Let's go. All right, so as you can see right now, we're currently in the media viewing area. We got this whole little patio here for the media only so we can, you know, see things. And the cool thing about it is it's right in front of the pit stop area. So this is actually where they're going to, you know, have the pit stop area where they fix the car really fast. If a tire blows out or something, they throw on a new tire real quick if there's a crack in the windshield but there aren't any windshields because there's no driver so it's kind of weird that there is a pit stop area but obviously it needs to be there because of the possibilities of the car needing to get gas all that good stuff now the thing is right now it is still early so we're not actually seeing the actual race they're doing practice rounds to make sure everything's working as planned they have the teams working on the algorithms of when it should shift because apparently it's a manual transmission and there is a clutch but it's not a manually used clutch and oh there it goes speeding down very very cool so like i was saying it has a manual transmission but it's not shifted by a human it's shifted by ai technology which is very very cool and i'm really excited to see what's going to happen when they're going 180 miles per hour in the dark full speed going around this one and a half mile long track so let's see what happens hi guys i just found uh, my friend richard and he going to talking about this event because i don't know nothing about but he's as the expert people here so tell me a little bit about this event. Is your first time? Oh, no. Uh, this is the third time we've been out here. <laughs> this is my second time being here, and it's, uh, yeah, it's been pretty cool. Yeah. And where are you from? I'm from California, uh, but I'm from Purdue University's team, and uh, we're Black and Gold Autonomous Racing. What's up? So, and uh, how this work, actually? Because I listen, there is no drivers, so how happen? No drivers. We get that a lot, actually. People come out and they say, oh, man, what is that? Is it remote controlled or whatever? <laughs> and I pretty much say we can drive it with an Xbox controller if we need to, but actually it's supposed to be completely driving itself. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we program the cars. They have more sensors than we have. You know, they have uh, LiDAR, they have radar, they have cameras, they have GPS. Wow. You know your phone GPS? Yeah. You got, you know, maybe three meters. We've got GPS that can go one centimeter accuracy. And wow. so with all of these sensors, we program the car to know where it's at and to know what it wants to do. And then we'd say, go, go do it. Wow, I'm really impressed. And I can see it's only two cars. Why this happen? Is possible that this show can do it with more cars? I mean, yeah, for a true full like 10 on the grid, it's like this. The amount of complexity that happens in one, just getting the car to localize, getting the car to know how to go around, then ramping up the speed, getting the speed going, and the next step, adding a second car in there. Now you have to not just that, you have to track where that car is, make sure you don't hit it, and make sure you can get past it and come back around again. Now, right now, we're practicing that. How fast can you go before either one car gets scared or before one car crashes? And that's kind of, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Next thing, I guess, uh, we're going to start adding what they call offense and defense. So okay. like you see, if you're in front of a car and somebody doesn't want you to pass, they might start moving out of the way, doing some crazy stuff. Okay. Now, that's coming up, but now you have to say, okay, what's the car's going to do? So trying to, let's say here, trying to bring like more cars on every time you add another car makes it just more complex and more complex. So we're starting and we're, we're building up and ultimately we want to get to 10 cars on grid. So, I mean, imagine 10 cars, every car doing its own thing, thinking for itself and wanting to go, but also not just where it wants to go, but where it thinks the other car wants to go. And you have to make your lines and go around that. I mean, we're right now following our ideal lines. How fast can we go? Deviating, going around, coming back again. And basically, when you start having to move from that and just go what you got. Wow. That's, uh, so... We want to get there. We're getting there. This is just the steps getting there. So we have a long, long way ahead of us, a high, high ceiling, and we're just we're just rising as fast as we can. Wow. So um, I'm really impressed with all this information. And I have one more question for you. Club. So how you believe uh, what is more danger? 
no drivers or drivers? You know, that's an interesting question. I, mean, <laughs> I would say mixing no drivers and drivers together, that's a weird kind of danger. Because when the people are all in the car, they act a certain way. Autonomy in the car is super safe and super precise. But we're still trying to understand mm -hmm. like what people do that they're really good at. Like, you may not have crashed a lot, you know, recently in your car, but yeah. I bet you can remember a time where you're driving and something almost happened. And you're like, oh no, and you move out of the way and it's fine. Now you see, we're trying to, people are really good at that. And we're trying to get the cars to be as good at that as people. So we're pushing this mm -hmm. at 200 miles an hour. Well, you know, 190 miles an hour. And we're pushing that at super high speeds. And at these super high speeds, mm -hmm. we know where things are gonna break down. And the more we can learn here, the safer we can make the cars when the when the automated driver is driving on the highway. So then when the human does something silly or something, you know, like humans do, yeah. this car knows I have to I have to get out of the way. Oh, and that's okay. the uh, that's we're trying to make it safe for everybody. Wow. If you look at accidents, which is safer? If everybody was automated, it would be real easy, but not a whole lot of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is going to help people be able to bring in the cars, bring in the automation and know that the safety framework is up. And then you can, then we can, we can have a lot more uh, people listening. Well, so right now I know more information about and you guys too. So are you ready for the show? We are always ready. We are ready. So check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Ali. And nice to meet you. See you around. See you around as well. <laughs> the Autonomous Challenge at CES, we have one more uh, demonstration, an exhibition that we want to put on for all of you, just to give you a glimpse of what the, the future has in store for Indy Autonomous Challenge and our teams. Uh, I think you've heard a little bit about the AV24. It's a, a new uh, autonomous vehicle platform that Indy Autonomous Challenge is rolling out with a number of our commercial partners, companies like Luminar, Continental, DSpace, uh, Cisco, Bridgestone, Morelli, NI, and VectorNav, and I think that's the ones I'm supposed to at least mention, um, and uh, a number of other companies that have contributed to this. I really want to give a special thanks to the three teams that volunteered to be part of this shakedown process for the, the AV24. I know that these are teams in particular that are used to coming in here and winning or going extremely fast. and. Uh, this is a process of, of validation and shakedown and testing and we've got some additional work uh, that we'll do but I promise you this vehicle uh, as we tune it and get it to where uh, it will be soon uh, will allow us to take autonomous racing to the next level particularly built in a way to be more precise, more accurate from a braking and steering standpoint to have longer range uh, perception capabilities and uh, we think it'll do really well, especially on road courses, which is uh, obviously something we, we took on with the challenge at uh, the F1 uh, circuit. So big thanks to the team from, uh, from Unimore, uh, from uh, the, the AI Tech Racing, which is Berkeley, Carnegie Mellon, UC San Diego, and University of Hawaii, and uh, for the Polytechnic of Milano MSU team. They've got this great new partnership with Michigan State University on top of their historic partnership with uh, uh, Alabama. So now they've, they've got the, the Big Ten football and the SEC football covered. Uh, yeah, exactly. Somebody, somebody here, right? Uh, it's too early, right, for the, for the Alabama Jewelers. Anyway, so what you're going to see uh, tonight is um, uh, our vehicles uh, head out onto the track, and if everything is cooperative, uh, we'll put on a little light show for you and showcase the, something autonomous vehicles are capable of that humans simply cannot do, or should not do at least. Thank you. All right, so as you can see, we just got the lowdown from Richard, one of the members of one of the teams that was racing here today. So it was really good because I learned a lot of stuff here that I wouldn't have known otherwise. I didn't know this was an actual event. I thought it was more of, oh, hey, look, we can have cars race themselves autonomously without any human intervention, which is kind of what it is, but it's also more than that, and it's actually growing. So it's very nice to see. And remember, this is actually the third year that they've been doing it. So it's only going to get bigger from here. Very exciting. So right now they're setting up for the light show that they're going to be doing in the dark once the sun goes completely down, which it actually looks like the sun's completely down. So let's go get out there and see what's going to happen.
So there we have it, the 2024 Indy Autonomous Challenge. First time for me, and it was actually really cool. The race itself was great. They were going at like 190 miles per hour around the track. It was fantastic. Now, as far as the light show went at the end of the show, to be honest, it wasn't like the best thing ever. I mean, as you can see, they do look cool with the lights on and they were driving around in complete and total darkness autonomously by themselves. But it wasn't the most exciting thing in the world like the race was. But it was still great to see that they're able to do all that with all the different sensors with no human intervention whatsoever. Very nice to see. And as I did learn about all the technology going into it, as well as how they're doing this and how they're trying to build it up to make it more of a serious event. And I'm definitely going to be following them around in the future and going to more events because it's a good time. Very cool. And I just like the technology, to be honest. Yeah, yeah.